Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today we're gonna have a go at overclocking the NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030. Recently we did a video with the HP Elite 8200 small form factor business machine and we used the GeForce 1030 to turn it into a budget gaming machine. I got a few comments like this one to check out overclocking so that's what we're gonna do in this video. In its current form, the machine has a Core i5-2400 quad-core processor, we've got 8GB of DDR3 memory, a 250GB hard disk drive and we're running Windows 10. For this video, I wanted to have a range of games, so we've got something older, Half-Life 2 Lost Coast from 2005, running at 1080p, all details maxed out, even 8x anti-aliasing. We've got Crisis from 2007, running at 1080p, medium details. Next up is Just Cause 2 from 2010, running at 1080p with a mix of medium and high settings. Then we've got Bioshock Infinite from 2013, running at 1080p with high details. And finally, Rise of the Tomb Raider, a game from 2015, running at 1080p with low details. The first thing I wanted to do was get some performance figures with the stock clocks. Gigabyte calls it gaming mode and the card has a base clock of 1227 with a boost clock of 1468 and the memory runs at an effective clock speed of 6008 MHz. So here we have the results, we're getting 161 FPS for Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. So I will not continue with that benchmark because it runs uh, really fine already. Crisis, we're getting 51.4 FPS, Just Cause 2, 46.8, Bioshock Infinite, 55.5, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, 41 FPS. So for the overclocking, I'm using the software from Gigabyte. I found it really simple and easy to use. It's got some profiles here. There's a gaming mode and an OC mode, but we're gonna overclock it manually. The first thing I did was set the fan speed to 100%. What I like to do when I overclock a video card is check out the individual overclocks of the GPU and then the memory. The GT1030 has a very narrow 64 memory bit interface, so I do that to find out what is more beneficial, overclocking the GPU or the memory. So the first thing I did was just overclocking the GPU by 10%. So Rise of the Tomb Raider goes from 41 to 42, Bioshock Infinite goes from 56 to 57, Just Cause 2 goes from 47 to 48, and Crisis improves from 51 to 53. So looking at this from another angle, a 10% Overclock in the GPU boost clock gives us a 3.9 improvement in Crisis, 2.1% in Just Cause 2, 1.8% in Bioshock Infinite and 2.4% in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Next up was the memory. So here I put the GPU boost clock back to default and we're only overclocking the RAM by 10%. Rise of the Tomb Raider from 41 to 43, Bioshock Infinite improves from 56 to 59, just Cause 2 goes from 47 to 48, and Crisis goes from 51 to 54. So in percentages, for a 10% memory overclock, we're getting a gain of 5.9% in Crisis, 2.1% in Just Cause 2, 5.4% in Bioshock Infinite, and 49 in Rise of the Tomb Raider. So comparing the two, it is clear that overclocking the memory gives you a bigger performance gain. So you should definitely still overclock the GPU, but focus more time and effort in trying to overclock the memory, you're gonna get more performance out of it. So now it's time to find out just how far we can push this video card. I started with the memory first, seeing that it's more beneficial. I overclocked it by 15, 20 and 25%. At 25%, things went bad, the video card crashed, you can see it here on the video. So I backed off the clocks back to 20% with a final effective memory clock speed of 7,210 megahertz. So now it's time to find out how far we can push the GPU. I tried 15%, which worked fine. At 20%, however, the display driver kept crashing. So I settled for the 15% overclock with a final GPU boost clock of 1688 MHz. So the final overclock was 1688 MHz for the GPU boost clock and 7210 MHz for the effective memory clock. And here we have the results. Rise of the Tomb Raider gained from 41 to 47, Bioshock Infinite from 56 to 64, which is a really nice improvement. Just Cause 2 from 47 to 52, and Crisis from 51 to 58. And here we have the results expressed as percentages. Crisis gets a gain of 13.7%, Just Cause 2, 10.6, Bioshock Infinite, 14.3, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, 14.6. 
So there you have it guys, that was overclocking the NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030. We were able to get some more performance out of this card, especially in the newer games, we could see quite a nice performance boost. We have learned that overclocking the memory is more beneficial, so do spend more time and effort uh, on the memory when you try to find out the limits of overclocking this card. So having used this video card for a while, I'm a huge fan of the 1030. It's available in low profile as well as single slot configurations and it only pulls up to 30 watts of power. So I'm a big fan of this card. It's also quite affordable here in Australia, starting around 85, 90 Australian dollars, a little bit more, just around the 100, 105 dollars mark for the low profile version. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of this card. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. And that's it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more stuff like it, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell so you get updates on future videos. Like, dislike, share with your friends, all the usual YouTube stuff and I shall see you soon with another one.